You know, March uh, has always been uh, one of my favorite months, uh, primarily because St. Patrick's Day falls on March 17th uh, every year. But I must say, in the, in the last, uh, this past year, uh, March is becoming a, a really exciting month uh, here at Quinnipiac University and Quinnipiac Athletics. Uh, a year ago this time, our men's hockey team was playing the Frozen Four and played for a national championship in, in Tampa. And just over the past two weeks, our women's basketball program um, uh, emerged and, and made it to the Sweet 16 and had two unbelievable. <laughs> that's the first time in university history that's happened. And, and they had two unbelievable games in Miami that I got to attend as well. And as I told the, uh, the team and the coaching staff, uh, beating the University of Miami in their home court uh, was, a, was a tremendous accomplishment for the program. And I want to ask, uh, Trish Saka uh, Fabry has done such a fabulous job with 20 years of building this program before it was even Division I into the, uh, the national powerhouse that it is today, a widely recognized uh, team and uh, as I said making it to the Sweet 16 was just uh, unbelievable. She and her entire staff are just uh, among the best coaches uh, we've ever had. Uh, I think some of the best coaches uh, in the country and certainly their student athletes uh, are, are tremendous. Uh, Trish would you please stand and be recognized? She's here. And now I'm going to introduce our Director of Athletics, Greg Amodio, who's going to make an important announcement today. And I'm confident that uh, with his announcements, uh, men's basketball is also going to make March a very exciting month here at Quinnipiac in the years ahead. Greg Amodio. Thank you, Dr. Leahy. You know, the term is easily spoken, but it, it rings so true that uh, in our profession, Skip Prosser, the late Skip Prosser, great basketball coach, once said to me, administrations win championships. And it's so true. When you have the assets and you have the people in place to be successful, you have a chance to win and achieve at a high level. So thank you, Dr. Leahy and the entire administration for your commitment to athletics and what we do every day here at TD Bank and all over campus. I'd like to also take a moment to thank Mark Thompson, Mark Waholik, and Gene Eusted for their unwavering support and counsel during the search process. To Bill Mecca, Sarah Frazier, and the entire senior staff, as I moved around the country over the last three weeks and was an absentee athletic director, I appreciate everyone's support, keeping an eye on the home front, and making sure everything moved in a positive direction. And finally, to Glenn Sugiyama, and his associates at DHR International for their thoughtful assistance in conducting a highly professional and confidential search. As we looked at the search criteria for the next men's basketball coach, we were interested in finding an individual who shared and could lead us to our aspirational goals. And when we think of aspirational goals, we think of reaching the highest level of achievement, not just on the court and in the classroom, and more importantly, a motivator who will strive to develop the young men in our program into leaders in the community and be outstanding representatives for the university upon graduation. Also, we look simply to greatness. We are blessed with examples all around us, from nationally ranked men's and women's basketball, or excuse me, hockey programs, to a women's basketball program that just concluded a historic run, taking a bit of my thunder away, but again, Trish and your entire staff, what a, what a great honor, what a great tribute to your hard work and efforts, and what a great opportunity for our institution to be able to share in that experience. We achieve greatness because we have exceptional leadership and culture in these programs. And now it is time to set our sights in taking men's basketball to the next level. As we move through the search, we kept coming back to one individual who exemplified the traits necessary to realize our aspirational goals. And that individual was Baker Dunleavy, someone who was described as thoughtful, calculated, a great recruiter, a passionate educator, a fierce competitor, a leader of men, and a winner. 
Over the course of our engagements, Baker was able to communicate a vision for the men's basketball program that was very much in line with our institutional mission and goals. A vision that would lead to long-term sustainable success on the court and in the classroom. Baker has been surrounded by high basketball achievers all his life, including a father, Mike, who served as an NBA head coach for 20 years, and a brother, Mike Jr., who's currently playing in the NBA. But most importantly, he reached the pinnacle of his own profession by winning the NCAA Men's Basketball National Championship last year with the Villanova Wildcats. My personal aspirational goal is I want us all to have a championship ring just like Baker has. College coaching can be a difficult journey, and you can only be successful if you have equal support at work and at home. And with that in mind, I'm pleased to welcome Baker's family to our Bobcat family his wife Chrissy, and daughters Rosie and Cece. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I am pleased and excited to introduce to you the next men's basketball coach of the Bobcat program, Baker Dunleavy. Well, thank you everybody for coming out today. Uh, I'd like to first uh, share my warmest of, of gratitude and thanks to President Leahy and, and Greg Amodio for sharing with me a, a detailed vision for what this place can be. And you know, after our weeks of talks, as, as Greg mentioned, it was very clear to me that there is a foundation in place at this school that, that shares a lot of what I believe and, and a foundation that I believe uh, can lead to great success. So I, so I thank them for making me understand what this place is, for opening my eyes, and uh, I'm very appreciative. I, I just met with the players and, and I also expressed to them my gratitude. You know, sometimes uh, in, the, in the age of, of Twitter and social media, uh, these coaching searches can be tough. They can really take their toll on everybody involved, especially the players. And uh, that does not get lost on myself and, and my staff. So we're very sensitive to that. We're appreciative to how they've waited. They've been patient. And uh, we cannot wait to get to work with them. Uh, speaking of players, uh, every coach that gets a great opportunity like this knows uh, it's not all about the X's and O's. It's not all about genius ideas you have. Sure, that's part of it. But every coach that gets an opportunity is associated with special players. And I certainly am no different. Uh, at Villanova, I've been able to coach some great players. And, um, and they are the key to, to why I'm standing up here. So I'm, I'm so appreciative of them. Um, I come from a, what I believe a very special place, a place that is, is very dear to my heart where I, where I graduated college. Um, I was lucky enough to be hired as an employee of the university, and, and I believe in its vision. Um, and, and I've kind of become really a product of Villanova University, and it's, it was really my first home as a kid that moved around with a coach uh, growing up so much. And it's provided me with, uh, I believe, great uh, humility, wisdom, and um, hopefully ability to lead a program on my own. So I would like to st extend my thanks to first Father Peter Donahue, president of Villanova, uh, who actually married my wife and I. So thank you for that. And then also for our first opportunity as, 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 coach, as a coaching family, um, Athletic Director Mark Jackson, who in two quick years has transformed the department and become a mentor to me. Um, and then finally, you know, a person that's been instrumental in my success as a mentor, and uh, that's, that's Jay Wright. Uh, over these last almost 15 years since I first stepped on campus, he's been a mentor to me on and off the court. I've really watched his every move, and uh, I've, I've really learned a ton. And, and as the new head coach here, uh, I hope I can mirror not necessarily just the success that he's had, but the way he's gone about it, the way he treats people, uh, the way he cares about his student-athletes, and the way he graduates complete student-athletes, men, 
students, and players. So that will be my charge here at Quinnipiac. And then as far as family goes, um, you know, people in this industry know there's nobody tougher and, and able to handle more than, than a coach's wife. And my wife is, is no different. Uh, Chrissy's here with our, our baby CC, who's only been with us a few days now. But, uh, and our other daughter, Rosie, is, is at home with her grandmother, hopefully watching. So we're, we're so excited to be here. Uh, we're excited to establish a family atmosphere and, and really become immersed in this community. Uh, this community is something special. Uh, there's been a lot of talk already, and deservedly so, about the other programs at this university. Uh, we don't take that success lightly. Uh, we're, we're not coming in here to reinvent the wheel as far as um, the overall athletic program. There's a model in place to be successful, and that has been set by the men's and women's hockey team, the women's basketball team, and other programs throughout this, this campus. Those programs are, will be an inspiration for us, and we look to work closely with them. Um, I'd like to finally mention just my parents. Um, you know, I mentioned growing up in a, in a basketball environment. Uh, I, I had the privilege of, of going to NBA practices. Uh, when Magic Johnson played point guard for the Lakers, I was six years old going to practice and never really knew how much those experiences would shape me as a player and as a coach. At the time, I didn't appreciate it. Now I do. I've been around a lot of great basketball and more importantly, a lot of great people. And my father is one of those people. Uh, he has instilled in me um, the work ethic of a coach, and probably that's the basis for, for success as far as I've seen it. I've watched him work tirelessly, and I've watched him handle things the right way in an incredibly tough business. And the same goes for my mother, who, again, to play on the theme of coaches' wives, moving from city to city and uh, continuing to handle herself with such grace. And I've learned so much from both of them as well as my siblings. Um, I really look forward to embracing this community and getting to know the people in this program, not only our current players, but the players who have come before us. I think it's something that we, we found to be very important to us at Villanova is the most important thing is the people. And, and those who have played here at, at this university before us, um, no matter what coach they played for, what era, uh, what, what time they were part of this program, they will be very important to me and connecting with them will be very important to our, our players. And uh, we'll know the history of this program. And then as these guys move on, it'll be very important to me that this is a place they feel comfortable and excited to come back, coming back to games, using this place as their off-season training program if, if they are playing professionally, which will be my goal for everybody that comes through here to play. So finally, just on behalf of my staff, uh, and my family, we could not be more excited to be a part of this. We are so eager to get to work. Thank you. I think, I think with that, we're going to take a couple questions up here and, uh, and, and move from there. So I'll, I'll, I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Absolutely. You know, clearly something I've, I've thought about. Um, you know, being spoiled, being at a place like Villanova where it's almost a given that people are going to be in the stands. And, and, and we probably did take that for granted a little bit. Um, you know, in my conversations with Coach Wright, you know, Coach, when he got his first head coaching job, he started at Hofstra. And he's given me great insight to how he started the enthusiasm level that eventually built there. Obviously, a big key to that is success on the court. But I also believe uh, if, if you're willing to integrate yourself into a community, if people see that you're invested in them, the students, you know, getting around campus, spending time in the dining halls, getting to know people around campus, um, giving my staff, giving our time to people, um, creating creative ideas in terms of getting students here and getting them here early. Um, you know, there's ways to do that. But I think more, more than anything, I hope that if our team plays basketball the right way, a way that people can really respect and appreciate, um, maybe that will be identified early and people will see that and, and come want to support it, knowing that if it continues down that path and we get the right guys, it'll produce winning. Another good question, you know, and, and um, I think each coach has things that they uh, aspire to and, and truly value. Um, you know, the, the core of our program will be playing hard. 
and um, and, and being a, a team that bases itself on toughness. Now, is that specifically in, in rebounding? Yeah, that'll that'll be a big part of it. But uh, I, I see this program as one that's going to recruit recruit good people. They're going to come in here and control what they can control from day one. And I believe effort is something that, at the highest level, every player can control. So. You know, these are these are things that I'm going to have to get the players to buy into. As far as stylistically, um, you know, I think a lot of people who watch college basketball have a feel for what Villanova has been. It's what I've grown up in. It's what I know. And um, I believe this day in college basketball, the most successful programs are ones with outstanding perimeter play, um, um, a spread a, a spread feel to your offense, space to make plays, and then uh, a versatile defense. That, that can switch, that can, that can do some different things. But all throughout, that has to be ingrained, uh, the value of playing harder than your opponent. And so, you know, as we look at things in year one to establish, we got to be realistic in uh, what, are the, what are the controllables. So our effort, and then number two, you know, the team and I just talked, uh, the, theme of, the theme of not just this offseason, but this program forever, as long as I'm here, is going to be our attitude. And attitude is something that's been very important to us at Villanova. And so not necessarily wanting things to be perfect, not necessarily expecting things to go smoothly, but how do we respond to adversity? And so those two things, effort and attitude, I hope will come through on the court right away for us as, as fans watch us. And then from a basketball standpoint, you know, I would hope you would see a lot of similar things that you've seen at Villanova from an X's and O's standpoint. We do, we do. Um, Greg, am I allowed to publicly speak on that yet? Uh, the, the assistant coaches, the coaching staff in place. Great. Um, so in, in, in forming a coaching staff, uh, a few things were, were very important to me, first of which was just high character people. Um, I believe the people that we're bringing in here are great men, leaders of men, and experienced in doing so. Um, one of the other things that was very important was I wanted guys that had worked at programs that I admired and, and that have been successful. So uh, if you're asking people to help you build a winning culture, you should bring in people that have experienced a winning culture. And, and the guys that I'm bringing, bringing in here uh, certainly fit that mold. So our assistant coaches will be Tom Pecora, uh, who was previously the head coach at Fordham University and helped my mentor Jay Wright get it started from the ground uh, at Hofstra. Uh, Sean Morris, who's been a vital piece of, of building the program at Boston University, a tireless recruiter, a big time worker, player development, every piece. And then finally, Anthony Goins, who has been working at Yale and helped Coach Jones get it going there. Obviously, they beat Baylor in the NCAA tournament last year. I just respect where all three of these guys have been. I respect their character, their work ethic, and, and above all, their ability as basketball coaches and developing young men. So I'm excited to get to work with them. I think, they'll be, I think they will be so excited to integrate themselves and their families in this community. And um, you know, everybody who's been a part of something successful, where it's a business, uh, a team, whatever it may be, you know, it starts with the people first. And, and I really believe in these people. Well, I think the main thing is um, you know, th they've, they've spent a lot of time with me. And so they know I have a lot of experience in this now. So the advice was to trust your gut and trust your experience, first of all. Um, you know, Coach, I leaned on Coach Wright a lot in terms of his first experience at Hofstra and kind of what, what, what drove him to make the decision to, to pursue that job and what made him successful. Uh, my father, you know, my father was uh, 30, probably just a bit older than me when he took his first head coaching job. His was with the Los Angeles Lakers. So he's had, he's had a different experience going through the NBA the NBA route, but coaching in different leagues, it's, it's all the same in terms of the values you need to have and, 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 and really finding a place where you fit. And, and that was the key theme. Um, what, what that you've learned through your time playing and coaching, being at Villanova, what about this school fits what you've learned? And to me, that was the key. I think the type of players that we were able to recruit at Villanova are recruitable here, obviously on a different level, but in terms of priorities. Kids that care about school, uh, they want to be the best student athletes they can be, kids that are driven to be professional basketball players, and kids that are willing to work and come from great families. So I think when families walk around this university, 
Not, it's obvious. There's a commitment to the kids' lives, and, and it's a beautiful place. So those were all things that went into it. But, but above all else, the advice they gave was go with your gut and make sure you find a good fit, and I believe that's what's happened. Good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. Look forward to getting to know everybody. <laughs>